So the next stage in this process is where you kind of get the neck of this funnel. You've got this wide searching, but then you have to sort of focus in. And that's really about selection. But this isn't just um, saying of all the things we could do, we're going to do this one and this one. It's of all the things we could do, these are the ones we're going to look at and this is why. So it's strategic selection. So that's a really important point because um, there's all sorts of innovation opportunities, but we've only got limited resources. Even the biggest company in the world can't do everything. So how do we balance all the things we could do with what we actually can make happen? And why is that a good thing for us to do? So selection's a really important thing, and it's very hard to do, because in a sense, we'd all like to follow through all these possibilities. So there's a lot of discipline around selection. It's, it's the point where if you're a startup, you're pitching for the money, and that's a very stressful situation because you know, most times you aren't gonna get the money. But the same thing happens inside a large company. You've got a project, you really are passionate for it, but will it actually go through? So this sense of the selection process is really quite a critical stage to manage. We know a lot about the tools that would help with that, things like portfolio management, bubble charts, things like that. They can help us. But in the end, we've got to have some disciplined, reasoned, strategic ways for making the decision of all the things we could do, which ones are we going to do and why. So one of the challenges in managing this is getting everyone to understand why the decisions are being taken the way they're being taken. Because basically this is a system for saying no very often because the organization can't afford it, we haven't done it before, for lots of reasons, this is why we're saying no. Now people, if they've come up, their passion is in there, if they've got a great idea and you tell them no, you run the risk of switching them off. And I've seen this very often, people are very disappointed and almost carry that grudge as a great thing on their shoulders for years to come. So the secret or one of the secrets in this strategic selection is managing that process. If you like using it as an educational device, this is why we're having to say no. Not because it's a bad idea, but it doesn't fit what we're trying to do at this time. And that's the secret of a good selection mechanism. People accept, okay, we understand the decision. It's a shame, but fine, we'll go back and come up with another idea. So it's a key part of making this kind of strategic selection actually work. So then we come to the next stage in the process, which looks deceptively simple. One word, implementation. Sounds easy, but of course, that's where all the trouble lies, because we're now talking about actually moving that great idea to become reality. So the challenge in implementation is, of course, project management. It's about resources and time and activities that go on. But the other big component is uncertainty. The whole thing about innovation is we don't know until we try whether it's going to work. Does that technology actually work? Is that market really there? Is the government suddenly going to change the rules on us? Are the competitors going to surprise us? Life's uncertain. It's, what's it, John Lennon. Life is what happens while you're busy making plans. So one of the things we have to manage in implementation, apart from bringing lots of people together in focused fashion to create this new product, this new service, this new process, apart from all of that, which is hard enough, we've got to manage the, uh, the, the risks. And one of the very powerful ways of doing this is a technique which massively associated with uh, Robert Cooper, which is the idea of stage gates. That's a really deceptively simple idea. Rather than gamble, say, okay, let's push the button and hope, we keep reviewing. So we say, okay, we're gonna start this project today. And then a little time after that, we've committed some resources, we've got some knowledge, we stop. And we say, okay, now let's ask the question, is the technology working? Is that market still there? Are the competitors still doing what we expect them to do? If you've got green lights in answer to those questions, open the gate, put more resources in, further down. So what you've got is a way of managing an increasing commitment of resources, balancing that against the knowledge you're now getting about, is this all working? Is the, are the lights still green? That's a very powerful discipline for doing what's a really hard thing in innovation, which is stopping things once they've started. Plenty of innovation projects gather a sort of life of their own and just keep going, good money after bad, lots of people's energy, doesn't get anywhere. So learning the disciplines of actually managing that journey of implementation, very important. 
And that, of course, is not easy to do. It's one thing to impose the disciplines, but people have got to accept them. It's a little bit like the selection decision we talked about a moment ago. So if people buy into the system, that's great, because they say, all right, that's a system which is managing our resources effectively. If their project halfway through that its life is stopped and they don't believe it should have been stopped, once again, you've run the risk of turning them off. So there's a lot in this around managing the risk, managing the project in this systematic learning fashion. I think the other thing we've learned is that it's very easy to think of this as a sort of inevitable linear process. We do this, then we do that, then we do that. It's not like that. It's a learning journey. And what we increasingly realized is it's a, a series of learning cycles. So we create something, we learn something about it. Even if it didn't work, we don't have to throw it all away. We can adapt, we can pivot, we can turn and move forward. So it's rather than a series of discrete stages, increasingly we're talking about agile implementation, which is a sort of a series of linked learning cycles, getting more and more information as we get closer to the marketplace.